Jack and Daxter is an iconic PlayStation platformer series that sold over 15 million copies from PlayStation 2 all the way to the digital re-release of Jack's 1, 2, 3, and X on the PlayStation 5. Of those 15 million people who bought the games, only a few hundred people have speedrun them. And when it comes to the hardest speedrun in all of Jack and Daxter, Jack won any percent? Only 10 brave souls have ever submitted a single run. Now, let's get one thing straight here. I personally never wanted to run this category. It's one of the most brutal categories in all of speedrunning. There's a reason there's only 10 runs on the board. In August 2021, though, I did a subathon over on Twitch and let my chat submit categories for me to run as a sub goal. There were over 300 submissions, and I picked one at random. Obviously, it landed on Jack One Any Percent, otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. However, this is a nice moment to reflect on the fact that it could have been worse. One disgruntled chatter suggested I speedrun League of Legends unranked to Diamond, to which I correctly responded by permanently banning them. A former friend submitted Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories 100%, which has an average runtime of 100 hours. I even had one optimistic sub suggest Elden Ring 100% which is a fine submission. Except this was six months before the game came out. In comparison, Jack won any percent 16 minute length seems harmless, but size isn't everything. This run is a gauntlet of the toughest tricks in speedrunning, and on top of that, when I looked at my busy social calendar, I realized I wasn't going to be able to spend more than one day learning the category and completing a run. So now I had my target goal. Learn and complete a Jack won any percent run within a single 12 hour stream. Now, we break this down heist movie style. The game map is one long, twisting corridor from the beginning all the way to the citadel at the end. The goal is getting there as fast as possible. We start here, on Geyser Rock. I'll go collect a few power cells and go to Sandover Village, bum-rushing to Fire Canyon. I'll navigate Jack through the notorious run killer that is Fire Canyon Skip, and then I cut through Rock Village, completely skip the claw fight, and hop on this zoomer. I fly the zoomer all the way into the volcano and make a quick detour into Spider Cave to get max health. From there, the rest is easy. Wait, did I say easy? What's the opposite of that? Outrageously difficult? Yeah, that one. I do some insane movement to skip through Lava Tube, an area covered in molten hot lava that kills Jack immediately if I make one wrong move. Assuming I leave Lava Tube alive, all I have left to do is to skip the Citadel and kill the final boss. And all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and like the video if you're enjoying this so far. So, there's obviously a lot to learn here. To accomplish this mission, I'd need a contact. An inside man, if you will. Someone who knows this game inside and out. Like, this is the only category, actually. Like, if you were starting out in this game, this is the only category I would not recommend to you. Just straight up. I'm just gonna tell you you're gonna have a bad time. This is Outrageous Josh. Not only is he the most widely known Jack speedrunner on Twitch, he's also held world record in every Jack and Daxter 1 category three times over. He's so good at Jack and Daxter that at the end of 2021, he was voted the greatest Jack series speedrunner of all time by a group of people who really, really care about Jack and Daxter. So, suffice it to say, he's the best man for the job. And finally, I'd need the right tools. Jack 1 has a debug option which lets you move Jack freely around the game. We use this to move Jack wherever we want and reset levels for practice. I believe I can With this tool and Josh's guidance, it was time to get started. Josh and I quickly went through Geyser Rock, the first section of the game, as I learned the basic movement that I'd use for the whole run. Immediately after Geyser Rock is Fire Canyon Skip. Yeah, let's do that one later. We yeeted Jack to the end of the game and over to the last two skips in the run, Kira Skip and Citadel Skip. Since we're afraid of talking to women, we abuse the pause menu to hit this button and die in the lava, which lets us into the Citadel without watching Kira's 40 second cutscene. The Sigma male grind set wins once again. Stay toxic, kings. Goal and Maya Citadel is the last area in the game and is meant to be the most challenging. Lots of people get walled here casually. Thankfully, we get to skip all of it. Pause buffering again, we roll jump to our death as we enter the citadel, which puts us up here. Then we grab this power cell, pause the game, and reload, remembering not to unpause. 
Oh, well, unpausing there just negates everything you just did. Uh, <laughs> Now, now there's a two minute cutscene attached to that power spell. <laughs> this takes us to the final boss, which I didn't practice because it's easy. Moving backwards from the Citadel is Lava Tube Skip, which is the other insanely hard skip along with Fire Canyon Skip. Chickening out, I decided to once again skip the skip and move on to Rocket Uppercut. To get out of Volcanic Crater and get into Lava Tube, you punch this plank of wood, which launches Jack into the air for absolutely no reason. It's pretty simple. <laughs> So then, you do another uppercut in midair to maneuver out of bounds into the little butt crack of this rock wall. Working backwards, the next part is getting to Volcanic Crater from Rock Village. We get around this big old boulder by running off this ledge and then doing an extended uppercut and jumping to the top. From here, we enter the Claw boss fight. Actually, fighting Claw is slow, so Josh had me learn a way to skip the fight entirely. We go over to this super chill rock, and I'll just let Josh take this one. Oh, you just hold X? Okay. Yeah, just hold X. After 30 seconds, you'll see what happens. I guess. Okay. You're gonna pause when it happens for about four seconds. Alright. One, two, three, four. So then, what do I do now? Just unpause and let Jack die. <laughs> Poor Jack, man. Okay, so here we are at Mountain Pass now. Yep, so you just did claw skip. Wait, really? Yep, so turn around. You can see claw. Oh my god, wait. Yeah. So that's that just skips claw altogether. Uh huh. No lava walk, no bullshit, no nothing. Yep. Wow, that's super cool. And, oh, uh, I accidentally took drive. the zoomer. Yep, that's what you want to do. Drive oh. the mountain pack. Yeah. Have fun, okay. It looks random, but here's an attempt at an explanation. This is called idle deloading. When we activate the claw cutscene, the game stores Mountain Pass as a backup location. Then we go to Boggy Swamp. Standing still for 30 seconds makes Jack go idle. For some reason, as soon as the idle animation begins to load, the game runs a check to see if any button is held. Oh, you just hold X? Okay. Yeah, just hold X. Because we held the X button, the game force quits the load of the idle animation. This triggers an in-game failsafe that makes Boggy Swamp our current location totally deload. Upon respawning, the game takes us back to the nearest geographical checkpoint in the stored area, which in this case is Mountain Pass. Now here's where the magic happens. The checkpoint that triggered the claw fight is right here, but there's a less obvious checkpoint just beyond that fight. If you get out your magnifying glass, you can see that this rock we stood on in Boggy Swamp is just a little bit closer to the second checkpoint than the first. So, when we deload and die, we just barely default to the second checkpoint, skipping the entire claw fight. Now, the big question. Why does any of this work? I don't know, dude. After getting past Claw, we take the zoomer through Mountain Pass into Volcanic Crater and head towards Spider Cave. Normally you don't go here, but it lets us get an extra bit of health which is necessary for Lava Tube Skip. We grab the health, and we leave Spider Cave without taking any damage, which is really easy. I can do that. Yeah, that's simple. Never mind. Wait, let me try that again. Okay, 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 here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. Ah! I did it. I did it. Oh my god, I did it. <laughs> no! Once you exit Spider Cave, you take the minecart over to Rocket Uppercut. See? It's all coming together. I've now covered every trick in the game except for the big two. Lava Tube Skip and Fire Canyon Skip. You just bounce on fire over and over and save time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. <sighs> Okay, fine, we'll start with Lava Tube Skip. LTS is an infamous trick in the Jack community. It saves 30 full minutes over doing a run without it, so it's a necessity. In Jack and Daxter, you need 72 power cells before you can unlock the zoomer for Lava Tube and go to the last section of the game. Right now, we only have six. It took years of trial and error, but runners eventually found Lava Tube Skip, a modern day miracle. Remember when I did the rocket uppercut and went inside the butt crack? We're gonna go back there in Volcanic Crater now. After I slip inside Inside the crack, I have to stand still again, like in Boggy Swamp. This time, however, I don't need to die. I need to make the game think I'm in Lava Tube. So I stand here, which is just barely inside Lava Tube, and after 30 seconds, the game stores Lava Tube as a backup location. I go back into Volcanic Crater to get a crater checkpoint, and I skip the Lava Tube checkpoint trigger with this jump. Oh, I did it! 
Now, even though I have lava tubes stored as a backup, the game thinks my actual location is Volcanic Crater. Now I can walk around Lava Tube without a zoomer. It's not that easy though. I have to move Jack across this bed of lava. Thankfully, there are these cold spots that Jack can safely stand on. The cold spots are surrounded by a sea of hot spots though, and with perfect movement, we can just barely traverse across using the extra health we picked up in Spider Cave. If I'm even a quarter second late on my inputs, I take too much damage and ruin the trick. Now we get to the crazy part. This is a Scout Fly Box. Breaking all seven Scout Fly Boxes in a level gives you an additional power cell. We don't want to break this box, however. We needed to do an insanely precise trick. If you walk very slowly off the edge of a scout fly box, you can get insane forward momentum by uppercutting off the box and spinning. This is called scout fly boosted. Learning the lava tube movement was already hard enough. Scout fly boosted was just cruel. Now that we're here, it's time to deload again. So once again, the game thinks we're in Volcanic Crater, but it has lava tubes stored as a backup. We need to deload Volcanic Crater so that when we die, the game takes us to a lava tube checkpoint. Time to get those magnifying glasses out again, kids. Thankfully, this spot where I died is just barely closer to the second checkpoint in lava tube than the first one at the beginning. So when we die, the game snaps us to the second checkpoint where Jack is forced to mount a zoomer and drive safely to the end of the tube. So, did that all make sense? No? That's okay. I spent two and a half grueling hours learning Lava Tube Skip. This was going to be a lot harder than I expected. I still hadn't even learned- Fire Canyon Skip. It is, without exaggeration, the hardest trick in the entire series. Even the best runners in the world, like Josh, can only complete this trick one in every 50 tries. Casually, this level's pretty easy. You collect 20 power cells and unlock this zoomer, which lets you safely fly over all the lava. We don't have time to collect power cells, though. Instead, we jump directly in. The lava in Fire Canyon is made up of hot spots and cold spots, like Lava Tube. When Jack touches a hot spot on the lava, he takes damage and eventually dies. But he doesn't actually register as dead until he lands on a cold spot and stops bouncing. This is different from Lava Tube Skip because the hot spots there kill you no matter what. The trick to Fire Canyon Skip is to only land on the hot spot until you reach the end of the canyon all the way over here. Here's the problem. All solid objects like this box and this ramp are cold spots, and there's a web around Jack at all times that constantly checks for objects around him. If the web touches an object, Jack snaps to it and lands, killing him instantly. The only way through it is to memorize where the hotspots are and be flawless for three and a half minutes straight. And that's if you're fast like Josh. If you're slow and stupid like me, it takes a lot longer. There are four spots in Fire Canyon Skip where the cold spots are particularly difficult to dodge. The four spots are this box, this box, this ramp, and these boxes. Learning the precise maneuvering in these four spots took a long time. I think that should be good. Go. Yes! Holy sh There you go. There you go. Oh my god. That's it. You have successfully done every single part of Fire Canyon Skip at least once. Oh my god. After three and a half unrelenting painful hours, I had done two run-throughs of the trick. Two. I spent about an hour eating some food, learning the final boss, and dealing with my PS2 overheating. And after nine hours, I was ready to attempt my first run. Let's do this in three, two, one, go! I start the run in Geyser Rock. I collect the four power cells laying around the area quickly and clear the level in under three minutes. And then we start Fire Canyon Skip. It's time, gamers. I don't want it to be time, but it's time. The start is hard. We need the game to think Jack is in the air, so we jump within three frames of Jack loading and then jump within three frames of landing until you get to the lava. It's really precise. If you do it wrong, the lava spits you back out. If you do it right, you can go forward. I have a tough time between this and first box. First box sucks. It's really hard to go around it. Like really, really hard. I was starting to doubt I'd even be able to get past this stupid box. I only had two hours left on the clock. I needed to clutch up. And almost out of nowhere, something amazing happened. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Okay, this is part two. Okay, I can do this. I'm gonna line Jack up with the tree on the cliff and the crack in the rocks. Okay. 
Split the, split the, split the, whatever it's called. Okay, so it goes, as I land on the ground, hold forward, bounce, bounce, third bounce, turn the camera to the right. All right, we're sending it. Okay, third. Okay, let me take my mental notes again. One on the ground, two in the air. One, two, one, two, one, and two, one, and two. That's when you want to move. And, and, move, 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 move. You're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, it was time to move things forward. I thought of a gigabrained idea. Fire Canyon skip is not gonna happen. I think I have to cheat. I borrowed a strat from another mid-sized content creator, and I cheated. I used debug to put myself back at the ramp. Even if it wouldn't count as a legal run, I wanted to prove to the people cheering me on I could still hit every section of the run. So onwards I went. Listen, if cheating is good enough for Dream, it's good enough for me. Oh! Oh, baby! Okay, okay, we got past third part. We got past third part. Bro! It exploded once and then stayed alive and then exploded again? That's not how explosions work. The way that explosions work, it explodes once and then never again. You don't hear about the atomic bomb again. Well, except for that. Well, okay, maybe not. Maybe that's not the best example. Yes! Okay, okay. No! No! I may have cheated, but I gave it a goddamn honest effort. Okay, Rock Village. Now we got ourselves a race. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Believe it or not, this still wasn't easy even with cheating. And sadly, I only have 45 minutes left to do the entire rest of the game. This means beating Lava Tube Skip with no mistakes. If I had to cheat, I was at least going to win. Okay, we got boulder skip. I will not screw this up. Two, three, four. Idle deload, baby. Takes me right past claw. Okay, zoomer time. Oh my god. Dude, I tree hopped. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Screw you. We killed that guy. With 40 minutes left on the clock, I'm in Volcanic Crater. It's time for Lava Tube Skip. I head to Spider Cave to get the health. I nail the rocket uppercut into the butt crack. I store Lava Tube by standing still. I even make it past the Lava Tube extended uppercut. I had 20 minutes to beat all of Lava Tube Skip and finish the game. hell. Whoa, what? What? That's hot? There we go. Okay. Long jump, take damage, roll jump, punch, roll jump. Okay, okay. Scout fly boosted. Oh. oh! Finally! Oh my god. Lava tube, please work. But then my worst nightmare came true. When I died here after idle deload, it was supposed to put me on this zoomer. However, it didn't work. Probably because I was using debug mode and cheated so much. What can you do, you know? As the 12 hour mark passed, I had to sit there like a loser watching my PS2 overheat. I failed the Jack 1 any percent challenge. But I was gonna finish this, goddammit. I mean, I was already so close. After screwing around for half an hour, I turned my PS2 back on. It was time to finish this thing. Do I turn off debug? Okay, it's off. We stand right here. We idle deload for 30 seconds. We, che we check for Ratchet's stanky leg. Okay, that was the stanky leg. That was definitely the stanky leg. Oh my god, thank you. Don't die on the lava, please, for the love of God and all that is holy. I can't handle any more, dude. My heart hurts. We get off the goddamn zoomer. Time for Kira skip. I was like, why wasn't... Why didn't Kira show up? <laughs> okay. Goal and Maya Citadel. Woo! Man, what a crazy, intricate, well-designed level. It's a good thing we can just skip it all by doing this.
Okay. We got the full Citadel skip, Lava Tube skip, Fire Canyon skip. They weren't good. They weren't technically legal. And it's time for the final boss. Check it, check it. Yeah. Whee! That's got to be close enough, right? Yeah. Okay, wait. Where is the thing? Here it is. Ah! <laughs> I knew I was going to die in the final fight. How the hell are you supposed to do this? Almost. We're almost there. I just have to avoid dying one more time. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? GG! GG! Oh my god, dude! This challenge taught me a lot about myself, but who cares about that? If this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll complete a full speedrun of Jack 1 any percent without cheats. Special thanks to Outrageous Josh for sitting with me in a call for 8 straight hours helping me learn this category, as well as Ruh and the entire Jack community for help on this video. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe and tell me what other games you'd like to see me do a 12 hour challenge of. I created a Patreon for no particular reason if you want to support my work with money. Also, if you want to learn more nerdy info on this category, I've linked plenty of videos and a link to the Jack speedrunning discord in the description. Okay, bye.